What is up everyone, in this video I'm gonna show you how I solved uh, a very nasty problem in my uh, Hollywood framework, uh, specific in my lock 3 queue. It's basically, it's gonna be the fastest uh, lock 3 queue you're gonna have in Golang because it doesn't use any locks, right? But that's not 100% uh, correct. I'm gonna show you where I'm using it. Uh, but it's completely, it's the first time I'm actually doing this in my whole Golang career. Uh, I'm gonna show you what problem I had, how I solved it, and uh, yeah, that's gonna be it. But before we continue, if you like the videos I'm providing to you, please consider subscribing, give me a thumbs up, leave some questions in the comments, and join my Discord community. And for the people that really wanna level up, Check my Patreon, it's full of exclusive Golang videos you can never find. There is no course on the fucking planet that has that, right? Check it out and let me know what you think about it. So basically, um, in Hollywood, which is an actor framework, I have a queue because all these actors, uh, these single uh, piece of um, computations, the only way they're going to interact with each other is by sending messages uh, and receiving messages. So sending and receiving is a very important uh, bottleneck in uh in an actor model, and Golang channels are too slow. Be they are very versatile, but they are too slow, especially in my use case, they are too slow. Uh, ring buffers with locks, with mutexes, too slow. So the only way I could uh, be faster than anything else was to implement my own, and I made something that is inspired by the LMAX Disruptor uh, from Java. If you don't know what it is, look it up. LMAX Disruptor, very interesting stuff. So basically what... Um, the GGQ, I call it, from Anthony GG, GGQ, A. Eh? It is what it is. So we have this read and function, right? And this read and function is basically something um, that is being, let me show you real quick. Let me open up inbox here, um, like this. So new inbox, consume, start. So each time we're gonna start a new uh, inbox. Uh, it's gonna do some lock OS thread stuff. Uh, I'm gonna, <laughs> it's, a lot faster by doing this, but uh, for some reasons, if you do some tests with uh, two of the same queues on the same binary, you're gonna have problems, of course. So I need to fix this with this uh, statement. But hey, so what gonna happen is, uh, in a go routine, right? In a go routine, we're gonna start reading n. That's basically, uh, it's not, why did I name this function read n? Because we're gonna read any number until the queue is empty. That's what's gonna happen. So it's read n is a blocking uh, operation, right? But it's being spent in another go routine. And uh, the cool stuff is that each GGQ is going to have a consumer and a consumer is an interface and the only thing it needs to implement is the consume function, right? Uh, and it's going to consume all the messages that the queue at that point of time uh, each each time the queue is in a certain uh, phase, it's going to grab all the messages that it can consume and it's going to batch them up and give it to the consumer, which is going to be the actor and the actor is going to loop over them and uh, process them one by one. Why is this important? Um, because it's much faster and if we go over the wire, this is very important stuff. You need to check this. This is very important engineering here. I spend a lot of time in it and I'm very proud on it also. Very proud of it also. So if we sending messages locally, it's not a big of a deal. We can send them one by one, right? It takes, um, I think, 50, 50 nanoseconds for one message, which is nothing, right? I can do 10 million messages in under a second. So basically, it's important for the wire. If we want to send messages to an actor on an other machine, we need to use uh, DRPC, we need to use protobuffer, and we need to do some serialization, right? So if we do this one by one, it's going to be super nasty because we're going to, if we have uh, one million messages, we're going to do this serialization and sending them over the wire one by one. That's bad. But because we have this consume function, which basically going to consume a bunch of messages, right? And if you write at the speed of light, it's it's going to fetch basically the whole inbox, right? So if your inbox is, um, let's say, 1,024 uh, of a length, you're gonna basically send 1,024 of messages over the wire at once. So you're gonna serialize them and send them in one batch, which is super fast, right? Uh, so that's one of the reasons. So basically what's gonna happen is, um, this read n is continu continuously going to spin, right? It's going to pull. So it's going to say, 
Um, actually, to be honest, are already in the new in the new branch here, which I'm gonna show you. It already solved the problem I had. So basically, what's happening is we're gonna do a for loop and we're gonna check the lower and upper bounds, what's being consumed, what's being written, and each time um, the upper bound is higher than the lower bound, we're gonna consume the whole shebang. We're gonna store it. We're gonna runtime go shed and all that stuff. Um, it's it's this is important stuff. It's no, I'm not going to go into that in, into depth for this. Um, maybe if you want, leave it in the comments and I can go more in depth why this uh, go shed stuff is in here, right? That's what it's doing. So, but before I'm going into this compare and swap stuff where we're using this condition and idling and all that stuff, I'm going to show you what the problem is, was, right? So let me do a git log real quick. <coughs> Uh, fix padding, fix CPU usage, yada yada. It's this one. This is basically uh, not a good one. So I'm going to say git uh, check out this shenanigans. We are here. Um, let's do, let's open up another terminal here. And let's do some of the examples, right? So let's say go, um, and if you want to play with Hollywood, uh, with this framework, check out the examples. It's full of good stuff you can learn from and how to use this uh, thing. What I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to say go run examples remote um, server main.go. This is a simple uh, Hollywood uh, actor that's basically running um, and idling. Basically, it's, it's just waiting for messages from the client, but we're not going to spin up the client. We're just going to spin up one single actor. Um, you can see it's, it started a process. Uh, the inbox is started and the server is started, which is basically a server actor. Uh, Nothing too, nothing too special, and it's just sitting there. But if we do a top here, uh, and I, <laughs> I need to make sure that my cheats are not on. Um, if you do a top here, look at this, look at this thing, right? Um, it's using, it's consuming 280% of my CPU. And if I basically, maybe you guys can already hear it, but my computer is basically, it's, it's launching off, it's going, it's going to the moon, right? Uh, it's going to the moon because it is using so much CPU, right? So we're going to stop this real quick. That's a problem, right? And if we do our benches here, uh, let's do make bench. <clears throat> so you can see it does basically 10 million messages uh, in under one second, right? It's super fast, right? But it's constantly pulling. It's constantly waiting for messages. But the problem is uh, if you have one actor consuming 200% uh, of your CPU, can you imagine if you have... 10,000 actors, because in an actor model, it's not uh, inconvenient that you have a lot, a lot of actors, right? So that's basically bad news, <laughs> right? So I needed to fix that. And I spent so much time, I tried everything, I tried to not use uh, this uh, disruptor queue. Um, I tried to do a lot of stuff, um, but it was, these things, it was working, but they were so fucking slow. Uh, everybody's doing the same thing, but over a second, over a second, second and a half, two seconds. Everybody's fucking slow. I don't want to be slow. This is the fastest actor model for Golang and for probably for a lot of other languages also on the fucking planet. So it's, it's basically a, a, a pact, a contract I made with myself that I needed to be the fastest and I cannot um, lose performance, right? So why is this actually consuming so much? Well... It's here, right? It's this read and function, right? This read and function, basically. Um, first of all, what it's gonna do is, uh, we're gonna boot this up, right? It's gonna do some stuff. It's gonna load uh, the lower bounds, how much is, is already read from the queue, and then it's gonna basically loop forever, right? So what it's gonna do is gonna check, is the upper bound higher than the lower bound? What basically means that we have written more than we have read, so we can actually consume everything. We store uh, our uh, lower bound to the upper bound. And um, this mechanic is basically so we um, don't need to atomically load a lot of stuff, right? It's uh, because we're in a for loop. And then we're gonna go shed, so we give it some time. It's gonna check again. It's gonna check again if we have written here, right? If that's true, we're gonna go shed once again, so it can pile up all these messages. So we're gonna say, yo, um, basically here, I, I have consumed everything, but now you can basically yield the processor, you can boot up another, you can uh, continue another go routine. Then it's gonna check, uh, or is there more messages in the queue? Yes, go shed once again, do something else. It's basically going to loop back to heat, and then it's going to consume uh, all the messages once again. Uh, this mechanic is um, so we don't consume two or three messages, but we're going to consume 
1,000, 200, 500 messages at the same time because we're using this scheduling uh, mechanism. Of course, this is not going to work when you have one um, CPU. But hey, if you have one CPU, what the hell are you doing? Right? Uh, but then, the problem is here, right? It's basically, let me close all this shenanigans here. So then we are basically checking. We are doing a compare and swap, right? So we're going to say, um, if the state is running, if it's, if it's running, it's basically going to uh, sleep for one microsecond. And I'm using, I, I, I used everything here. I started with a go shed. That's basically bad news. Then I started with a nanosecond. That's bad news. I started with a microsecond. It's still bad news. I started with, I, I used a millisecond. It's too slow. It's nothing helped here, right? Because we're continuously doing the CPU cycles and it's eating all of our CPU, right? So how do I fix this, right? Well, um, <clears throat> let me see, what can I do here? Um, wait. Can I do this? Probably fucked it up, but it is what it is. Um, is that true? Hat, what is your master heat? Fix it, yeah, yeah, it's fine, it's fine. Right, so basically, uh, yeah, let's open up this queue once again. All right, cool. So basically, the, what I did is um, I needed to have a way to block in a very efficient way, right? And what I'm doing here, let me open up inbox also, basically. So what I'm doing here, I'm using something that is called a sync condition, right? And a sync condition is basically something, uh, it accepts an, uh, a locker, right? Sync condition here, it accepts a locker, which is basically a mutex or something you customly made yourself, something that can lock, it's a locker. Uh, in this case, we in initialize it with null. There is no uh, locker, uh, there is no mutex, no pointer available here. Each time we basically come into this idle state, right? This is basically the idle state, right? So we, we, there is nothing to read. There is nothing to do. The, 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 the queue is still running. N nobody is called close on us. So we need to perform. We need to wait. What we're going to do is we're going to make a mutex. <clears throat> we're going to set the mutex to the condition. We're going to store atomically. Idling is an atomic bool, right? Atomic bool here. And I still need to fix my uh, my padding here, my cache lines. I'm, I'm working on it, guys. I'm working on it. <clears throat> so we basically, where are we? Read is another thing. Um, yes. So we store atomically that we are idling, right? We are idling. Is idling? Is true. We're going to lock. And then we're going to wait on the condition. Who is setting the condition? Well, I have something like a uh, function here, and that's awake. Awake the queue if it's in the idle state, right? So we're gonna first check, because we don't wanna signal this condition all the time. We're gonna check, uh, are we idling? Yes, we are idling. Signal the condition. That basically means each time you signal it, it's going to uh, unblock this wait. We're gonna unlock our mutex, and we're gonna store that um, we are not idling anymore, so it can basically go back here and consume all our messages, right? Uh, and basically, if we use our inbox here <coughs> and we say send, the only thing we need to do is call awake, right? Each time we're going to send, we're going to call awake. This queue is going to check, are we awake? Yes, we are awake. Then we don't need to do anything, right? Because then we are basically here doing stuff and probably doing a go shed. And then we're going to check it again and a go shed. And then we can consume all the messages. So no need to awake us. But if you are sleeping, if you are idling, uh, we're going to signal the condition. We're going to say, yo, time to wake up. And he's going to do his job and consume the messages. That's, that's, that's the thing. That's what I did. And uh, let's test this real quick. So I'm going to say, go run. I'm going to do this. Uh, boom. We boot up the server. And we're going back to top. Uh, let me top again. And then now we see there is nothing here, right? It's all good. It, it, this is note. It's not us. Where are we? It's main. We are not even in the top uh, whatever. Right? So that's how I solved it. And you could say, yeah, this is weird. Yeah. <laughs> it is weird because 
I think it's a weird a weird way to solve it, but that was basically the only way. I tried with channels, guys. You need to listen. Uh, um, I'm not the smartest person on the block, but I'm, all, I'm also no idiot, right? So I tried with channels, but that's... It's hard to signal a channel multiple times, right? You know what I mean? It's like... I tried with a channel and, and with a force select, but um, it, it, it's a little bit more complex than you think. It was basically the first solution, right? I thought, okay, I'm just going to use a channel. I'm going to use a force select and I'm going to signal the channel, but it's still, it's not the same. Uh, try to implement it. It's, it's a little bit, it's not that convenient to do, right? Uh, then I basically thought, what weight groups? Why don't we use a weight group, right? It's, it's basically, this seems like a scuffed weight group. <laughs> and I thought the same thing, but the weight group is also not going to work because, I don't know, just try it. I, I, I did it. Uh, it it's, has weird behavior with this weight group. So the only thing, um, and maybe maybe weight group is using a condition uh, behind the scenes. I have actually no clue. Uh, we can check it out. Uh, but this is basically something that worked for me. Uh, I think it's a very nifty trick. It's does not consume any CPU and it works like a fucking beast. Look at this, right? If we do, um, wait, actually, to be honest, I need my mouse here. So let's kill this thing. Clear for the people. Uh, for the, some, some people in my Discord channel are laughing with me because I mistype clear a lot and I need to do another shortcut. But hey, especially for you, clear. So basically, uh, let's 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 bench. Uh, make go, make bench. Boom. You can see I'm still. I'm still sitting at this at this point, right? Uh, for my local messages, it, it's super fast, right? Uh, we don't we don't lose any performance actually. Uh, sometimes it's a little bit faster, sometimes it's a little bit slower. It depends also. Um, most of the time, I can get uh, below 800 actually. Come on, give me a 700. Damn, it's not gonna it's not for today. But actually, I was. Uh, you can see there is no performance loss at all. Um, and most of the time, uh, we don't need to wake it, right? Um, if, if you're sending in the rapid pace, it's never going to in the idle phase. It's always going to be in this processing in this processing phase, right? Thanks to this ghost chat, right? It's all uh, thanks to these two ghost chats are so fucking important because they make sure that if we have a lot of throughput, uh, well, if you have a lot of messages being sent, being written to the queue, it makes sure we don't go into this idle state. It makes sure we can buffer them up, um, give 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 our other programs time to uh, do do stuff, but also and and buffer messages up and then send them in batch, which is basically a double win, right? I think this is this is insane. Let me know if if I'm stupid, but this is is working. This is the fastest one. And it, I, I not invented this myself. It's based on research. It is based on uh, I, I spent two weeks and a half making this. Like now, it's crazy. But hey, right. So basically, a same condition. Never used this in my whole life. I didn't even know that it existed unless I was looking at uh, at the sync package, <laughs> uh, and I saw a condition, and I thought, why not? Why not do we do this? Do this thing, and it works perfectly fine. And I'm so happy. <laughs> because now I can do other stuff, right? So that's basically it. Uh, I hope this video helped you uh, with some inspiration and some, I don't know, some stuff. It's not a coding video like you're normally used, uh, like I normally do, but sometimes these, I don't know, it's a walkthrough, you know what I mean? Um, I hope you like it. Let me know what you think about it. Hey, for the people that are still not subscribed yet, please consider subscribing, give me a thumbs up and leave some questions in the comments. Jump into my Discord community. And I'm looking forward to see you in my next video or live stream. Bye-bye.